not another Rich Tech recap video. I mean, it happened a month ago, right? Well, you are right. Rich Tech happened a month ago, but some time processing all of the highlights of the event can take a while. And as many of you from Family History Fanatics fan club know that I like to take my time when new announcements come out before I give my hot takes. So maybe they're a little bit cold. In any case, welcome to Family History Fanatics. If you're new here, I'm Devin Noel Lee, and I love to help you climb your family tree. And on my other channel, Write Your Family History, I love to teach you how to write those family histories. So let's talk about some of the things that I thought were highlights for Roots Tech, and apparently people missed it. Did you know many speakers at Roots Tech publish books or have other useful services? For several years, I requested Roots Tech do something a little more to support the speakers who offer books or other services in addition to their teaching at Roots Tech. Now, I'm happy to announce that Roots Tech offers a speaker store so you can support the ladies and gentlemen who have provided you helpful knowledge. However, it's not really easy to get to. Now, on the Roots Tech website, you will scroll down and you will maybe see the sessions, the keynote speakers, past sessions, sponsors, the LDS area, but you don't see a whole lot about the speakers behind the keynotes. You don't see anything about the speakers who are doing those pre-recorded sessions, but here's where you need to go. So click on menu and then scroll down to Roots Tech 2023. And now don't click on the speakers. The store is not under there. It is in the expo hall. So click on expo hall and then use the sidebar to scroll past the sponsors, past the society sponsors, past the exhibitors. There's quite a lot of them. Many of them were virtual. They weren't in person and that's okay. But keep going, keep going. And then you're gonna see featured booths. And then the Roots Tech Speaker Store. Oh my gosh. So here is the Speaker's Bookstore. And if you scroll down, you're going to see a number of books that speakers at Roots Tech have produced. Click on See More and you will see even more books. You'll just have to keep clicking on See More. Now, either I didn't get the memo or I didn't read the memo clearly, I didn't remember being asked to contribute to the speaker store, and that's okay. You can find my books at familyhistory.com slash books, or go over to Amazon and type in Devin Noel Lee, and you'll be brought to a page of books that Andy and I have produced together. If you get lost, the links will be in the description box. I love that Roots Tech did put this together so that you can support the speakers to give you valuable information in the in-person or the virtual conference session. So please go check them out. Let's just take this book, Your DNA Guide, click on that, and you will be taken off the Roots Tech website and directly to a page where you can purchase the book or at least preview the details about it so that you can make the decision yourself. And we're going to scroll down past the books and now you're going to see the services. Now, Megan Hillier has a really great podcast and she also has a beginner online course that you might want to check out. Click on that. And once again, you're going to be taken directly to her website, which is really fantastic. So if you didn't hear about the speaker store, now you know. And if you have heard about it, whose books or services did you check out? Let me know in the comments section or the chat. The next highlight stresses the importance of small changes in the genealogical industry that go unnoticed but are pretty transformative. Kindex is an innovative platform that provides a way for you to digitize, transcribe, and index family records and documents, making them easily searchable and accessible to your researchers and family members alike. Does that sound like something I've mentioned recently on this channel? 
It should. I released a video about what to do with old family journals and diary on this channel. I also mentioned what to do with old family letters on my second channel, Write Your Family History. In both of those videos, I mentioned the importance of transcribing those items after digitize them. What's better is when you can collaborate with others. Kindex makes collaboration possible. Now, those longtime fans of Roots Tech might think, but wait, that's not really new. You might remember that Kindex was the People's Choice winner at the 2017 Innovators Showdown. Their new thing that they're doing is partnering with Larson Digital, someone I mentioned in the video about outsourcing the digitization of your old photos. So the Kindex Larson Digital collaboration is something called a rescue box. The rescue box scans one full banker's box of your records, including photos, diaries, letters, scrapbooks, and any other record you can think of. They process and load all the digitized records into a Kindex archive. They provide a flash drive backup of all the digital records. While Kindex offers curbside pickup and drop off in several Utah counties, you could order a banker's supply box for, from any office supply store, fill it up, and send it in. From scan to archive with the capabilities of collaborative transcribing your archive, this partnership with Larson Digital and Kindex is a fantastic step forward in the genealogy industry. Now, who benefits from this service? Let me scroll through some of the many families and family associations that have already created archives with Kindex. Mormon Battalion, Dorothy Smith and Ellsworth Clark, Eugene and Edith Croft, and so on and so forth. But large and small genealogical societies, libraries, and historical archives can benefit from Kindex, specifically, or the Kindex Larson Digital Partnership. If your goal this year is to preserve your family or community archive, then this is something you won't want to miss and links for Kindex will be in the description box. Now, one of the things I like to do whenever I'm at Roots Text is explore the Expo Hall. There's a lot of great knowledge in the lectures, but the Expo Hall is a gathering of product and service providers that you won't want to miss. And as I was walking through the Expo Hall this year, I met Andy Joyce, the husband of Jenny Joyce, the co-creators of a website called sitebuilder.com. Now, I did notice that my friend Nicole Dyer of Family Locket featured this tool on her blog, but not enough folks are talking about this tool to help us take the headache out of source citations. Now, I will be doing an interview of Andy and or Joyce in the near future walking through what this program does. So I'm not going to get into too much details here, but here's a sneak peek. I don't think you need to know the ins and outs of crafting source citation. It's more efficient to use a tool that will take the details of a source and output the citation you need with just a few clicks of a button. Andy spent about 20 minutes with me walking through the program and answering all of my questions. To say he is knowledgeable is an understatement. Now, he will admit that his wife knows more about citation and he knows more about the programming, but he knew enough answers to the questions that I had that few people know to ask that left me impressed. It was very easy to enter the details of a citation and then choose from various styles, not just one, from Evidence to Explain, University of Strathclyde, UTAS, MLA, and more. So I can't wait to share that interview with you later this month. If you have any questions about this tool, send them to me at familyhistoryfanatics.com slash contacts before April 6th. And I will make sure I ask those questions and put them into the video. Now, if you're watching this video after April 6th, look in the description box for a link to that tutorial slash interview. Now, before we continue, how, how many of the three things I talked about, Kindex, Site Builder, and the speaker store at Roots Tech 
did you know about? If you knew none, type zero in the comments or the chat. If you knew all three, type three. And if you knew one or two, type those numbers as well. Let's just see how savvy you were with taking things from Roots Text experience, whether in person or online. Now, one thing I did like is that my colleague Amy Johnson Crow shared her personal feelings and experience about Roots Tech being back in person. Make sure you go and watch hers. And I will tell you that I have a similar but slightly different take on things. And I hope that maybe you agree. So Roots Tech was noticeably smaller than years past. It was quiet. Now, Amy said she said it was a comfortable crowd size. I was actually kind of sad. And the reason why I was sad is I felt bad for the conference planners, the ones who are trying to hype up this event to get everybody to come and to reunite and come back together and then put all the effort into a big conference and then to not have as many people show up as they were hoping. I know that my class on Thursday night was rather small but I don't know if it was because it was at 4.30 and most people, since there isn't evening activities, they wanted to beat the traffic of Salt Lake and just go home. I don't know if it's because we really felt like we were way far away from other classes. And then if you really wanted to go to those classes, you had to make that hike and that journey rather than just popping into some of the other ones. I'm not sure. But that's all right, because it was still fun to be with everybody, to meet the fans, and so on and so forth. By contrast, Friday morning, plenty of folks made the trek to those far classes to attend my class on newspapers. And if you missed my in-person presentations in the FHF membership, I have already done the virtual version of the passenger list class. And this month I'm going to do the newspaper class, which was really well received. So stay tuned for that and watch for announcements on the community tab of the Family History Fanatics uh, YouTube channel. But back to why I felt sad. So Andy and I have attended Roots Tech since 2016. We've also had a booth in the Expo Hall. And as I watched from those classes far, far, far away in Judea's Plains, as I like to kid, and I walked through the empty portion of the space of the Expo Hall, I just felt, oh, where is everybody? And I remember standing where the Family Search Discovery booth used to be and standing where my booth was the year we had it and where the demo theater was and just reminiscing sadly that that's not what was happening. Um, and so when I finally reached the expo hall and went through, it was smaller. But there was a good thing about the smaller. Every vendor had the opportunity to be visited. It wasn't so overwhelming it typically wasn't so noisy that you couldn't enjoy the expo hall. The space between the aisles was larger and it just felt comfortable. And so there were some trade-offs. So yes, I was sad that it was smaller. I was sad because I know how hard the staff of Roots Tech worked to put on an amazing conference and create this expo hall experience and to allocate classes correctly and I think it was just harder for everyone and I, and I just felt sad or maybe I should have a different uh, emotion. You guys tell me how you, if you attended in person, what emotions you felt about the smaller size. I do want to celebrate um, the tech staff. <laughs> if you didn't attend in person, you don't realize how hard the tech support staff works to ensure that all the computers, all the mics, Everything is working. As a speaker, I get used to, it can't get worse than this moment. I was giving my passenger list class on Thursday night and one projector was like flickering and acting up. It was very distracting to me because I thought, you know, I talk with my hands and I have my um, slide clicker advancer remote control thingy in my hand. And I thought, oh, okay, well, I need to stop doing whatever I'm doing because I'm mixing up this projector. But as I tried to figure out what was going on and not 
stop talking about my topic, I finally just stopped and said, hey, why don't we turn off this projector? It's possessed or something. So somebody went up and they turned off the projector and then all of a sudden, all of the uh, projectors went out. Like just total blank screen. <laughs> oh, great. Now what? Well, the now what was I had a decision to make. I could stand around and just wait for tech support to fix the, pre the slides. I could continue my presentation and as soon as things get up, I could advance to the slides. And so, oh, this is what I was talking about. This is what I was talking about. Or I could ad lib. Well, apparently a room monitor lately came to me and said, that was fantastic. You just started filling in the time so the tech staff could work without being super stressed. I feel so bad for everybody. Um, I told a story about, you know, technology happens, <laughs> things happen, it'll get fixed. I trust the staff, they'll be done soon. Here's a story why we wait. As soon as they got everything back up and running, I picked up where I left off and we finished off. The staff was kind enough to say, why don't you go a little bit over? So we, people didn't feel like they were cheated out of a full presentation. We went through and it was great. But I, I can tell you, there's a number of technology problems that could go wrong at that size of a conference is large, but the staff was responsive. They figured things out and I want to give kudos to them. So if you attended an in-person event and there was somebody that you want to praise, please put that in the comment section below. If you attended virtual, especially the live virtual part portions, and there's somebody worth praising, could you drop those comments in as well? I'd really like to see positive vibes to praise those who are the unsung heroes of such conferences. So that's a wrap of Roots Tech 2023 from my eyes. I hope that you'll enjoy the rest of 2023 here on Family History Fanatics. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that. We're hoping to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, but we need you to click that subscribe button in order to make that happen. Bye now.